Okay, we have two statements on the spot. The first one says, if f is increasing on the interval i, then we must have the first derivative being positive for all x on i. And secondly, we're trying to say that if the first derivative is always positive for all x on i, then f has to be increasing on that interval i. Well, are these two statements both true? Or well, maybe just one of them is true, or well, maybe are they both false? As always, please pause the video and think about them first. Okay, hopefully you guys have a chance to try this, and let's go over this one first. If today we have the first derivative being positive on a certain interval, then we can actually conclude that f has to be increasing on that interval. So this right here is true. And you can also say strictly increasing because we have the first derivative being positive, right? And in fact, I would like to just box this for you guys. And maybe I can prove this later on in another video because today I want to discuss this right here. Can we really say if f is increasing on an interval, then the first derivative has to be positive for all x on that interval? This right here is in fact false. We cannot say this. And of course, to show a statement that's false, we will have to provide a counter example. So here we go. This is the counter example that I would like to use. So let's just put this down. And of course, maybe you guys can come up with a different counter example. But the one that I would like to use is I will take the function to be x to the third power on the interval negative infinity to positive infinity. As we all know, x to the third power looks like this. So let me just draw a picture for you guys. We have the function that's going up and then it's like flat like this and then it goes up again, right? I know my picture is not the best, but I tried. Anyway, we see that f of x is x to the third power. It's always like going up, but it seems like it's flat right here. Yes, if you compute the derivative, you get 3x squared. And if you plug in 0, in 2x, you get 3 times 0, which is 0, right? 3 times 0 squared, it's just 0. So, the, in fact, this right here is also a pretty debatable uh, topic in calculus, or maybe one of the confusing parts in calculus 1, is that is x cubed increasing as 0 or not? The answer to that is yes. The truth is x cubed is always increasing it's increasing on this interval, including zero, of course. But the derivative is in fact zero. So we cannot say that if f is increasing, then the derivative has to be always positive. We cannot say that. So here is my claim, and I will prove my claim, and then I will just you know, show you guys. The claim is that f of x, which is x to the third power, is increasing everywhere, well, just say on um, negative infinity to infinity. And I will just prove this because we already see that the derivative of x to the third power is zero at x equal to zero. So if I can show that f is actually increasing everywhere, then we'll be done. This would be a nice counter example for that. Okay, here is going to be the proof for it. And of course, I cannot use this to prove that because uh, the derivative at 0 is 0, so I will have to go back to the fundamental. The idea of having an increasing function is that when we have two different x values, the bigger the x value should give us the bigger y value so that you can see that the function is actually increasing. And to begin with our proof, we are going to first pick two x values, and I will just call them to be a and b, and I'm going to say that a to be bigger than b. So that you see, this is the bigger x value. Then what we have to do is, we will have to show that this is actually going to give us a bigger y value in comparison with that one. In another word, we have to do f of a to be greater than f of b. And this is pretty much how you prove a function that's increasing by using definition, including how to prove this statement right here as well. But anyway, I will do that maybe later on. Okay, so all we have to do is check this inequality. So let's go ahead, we just have to check. f of a is just that you plug in a into x right here, so you get a to the third power. 
and you are trying to see is this going to be bigger than f of b not facebook by the way you're just plugging b into x right here so we are trying to see if this is bigger than b to the third power and of course i cannot really just tell you guys that of course a is bigger than b a to the third power has to be bigger than b to the third power that's exactly what we have to show so i cannot just tell you guys that we will have to do more algebra for this okay so let me just minus b to a third power on both sides. In another word, we are saying is a to a third power minus b to the third power greater than zero. We don't know, that's why I have been putting down the equation mark. Anyway, if you look at the left hand side, we have a to a third power minus b to a third power, so we can factor this out. By the difference of two cubes, this is going to be a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b square and I would like to know if this is greater than zero or not well for this part a minus b this is greater than zero because we have this condition right here so I'll just say a minus b is positive that's good and all I have to do now is to show if this is greater than zero or not because positive times positive, of course, will give us positive, right? So I just have to see if this is greater than zero or not. And to do this, notice that we have squares and square. So perhaps one of the ways to do it, one of the best ways to do it is to complete the squares. And let's do it on the side right here. So I just put down notice. Okay, we have a squared plus a b and plus b squared. Hmm, I want to somehow construct this so that this is somehow a perfect square. So that I can say a perfect square is always positive, and that would be great. Hmm, I wish to have a 2 right here, right? So that I can just do a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. I can complete the square on that easily. Hmm, but if I put down Two right here that means i will have to subtract a b and i don't really feel comfortable when i have a subtraction right here so instead i will multiply everything right here by two so let me do that right here like this so that i can have the two in the middle but in the meantime i will also have to multiply by one half so that i'm just multiplying by one and check this out we are going to get one half I will keep this on the very outside and I'll distribute this two into the parentheses so I get 2a squared plus 2ab plus 2b squared like that and now I will still have the one half in the front notice this is 2a squared I'm going to break this down as a squared right here and then maybe I'll put this down right here at the end a squared and of course it's plus because a squared plus a squared give us 2a squared, right? And then for this term, I'm just going to leave it as how it is, plus 2ab. And then for the 2b squared, take a guess what I'm going to do. Yes, you guessed it right. We are going to write this down as plus b squared and then plus b squared. And now everything is just plus, so I think I'm okay with this. And this is one half right here a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, this is what I want to see because this is just a plus b squared, right? This is a nice perfect square. And then what's after that is just you add another perfect square, maybe just a squared by itself, and then plus another perfect square. So as you can see, this is a square plus another square plus another square and then times a positive one half. Of course, this is always greater than zero. So this right here checks by the note. Therefore, yes, f of a is indeed bigger than f of b. This right here checks by doing this. So finally, we can conclude that x to the third power is in fact always increasing and it's also at increasing at zero. And that's exactly what I want to show you right here. And once again, I would like to just make this clear. x to the third power is increasing at zero, but the derivative is zero at zero. So yeah, 
That's it. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment down below. And if you are new to my channel, please subscribe. I like to make math videos for you guys. And as always, that's it. I forgot to put a box right here. I'm sorry. That's it.